guys, we are first client Liverpool, sorted, done and dusted. Don't know if you can see it in here or not, but first client Liverpool, done and dusted. 30 minutes down the road here to Scammersdale to another client, new site visit, new site compliance visit. Anyways, we'll see if they want to get a bit of footage when we're here, maybe. As we go on, all good to go? Yep. Alrighty folks, so it is Tuesday night. It is absolutely freezing. So we're down here with a client in Skimmers Deal in Liverpool, and it is our old friend, uh, McConaughey Refrigerated Distribution at their new site and their new business, which is Fridge Freight. So the plan is, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do the transport compliance, health and safety, all the usual stuff, but I'm gonna try and go in and get a chat with the GM possibly, and even maybe Richard McConaughey himself. So come on, let's take a look inside. Alrighty folks, so we're inside the building now. We're going to go in and chat to the GM of McConaughey Refrigerated Distribution and the GM of Fridge Freight Limited. So, let's go. Bonjour. Hello Steve. Yeah, he's doing alright? That's bad, too bad. Hey, you don't mind being on YouTube? No. No, that's fine. Go on ahead and click like. No, we don't know. Anyway, how, how are you all doing? All good? All good. Good, good. So, what we're going to do here, we're going to have a quick chat with the guys um, regarding the new site here in what's the what's the address of it? East Gillylands Industrial Estate, Scammersdale. Gillylands in Scammersdale, Liverpool. Gilly Brands. Gilly Brands. Yeah. In yeah. Liverpool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Scammersdale. Scammersdale in Liverpool. Okay. On the site in Ballymoney, yeah. these are all established and going a long, long time over there. Now you're over here to expand out the and business, or is this a new business? This, about a year ago, Stephen and I identified and bringing all the, the getting a one stop shop and bringing all the groupage pallets into this hub, consolidated all with their own in house veterinary team and their own in house customs team. One stop shop where everything can be processed in the one hub, one seal, one veterinary stamp, and straight into Ireland, Ireland, both north and south. So that's like a, that's a full end solution, really, what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, for, for groupage movements into Ireland. This can be like a consolidation centre where everyone can be consolidated before it's sent over in the, over the water. Okay, that job. So the site itself, what capacity can you take in the moment? So what we're talking here now is, I better do an introduction I suppose. So we have Richard Ewart here, who is the GM of both McConaughey Refrigerated Distribution and Fridge Freight Limited. And we have Ricky McConaughey here in the corner, who is the uh, founder, owner and managing director of both companies, isn't that right? That's correct, Steve. Yeah. 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 So um, we'll chat here, first of all, you, yeah. Richard, about the capacity in this particular site. It's a fantastic site, so it is, but capacity at the moment, talk to me. Capacity at the moment, we would probably have in the region a space for about 600 pallets, and our current space, and if we extend out, possibly extension, maybe another 1,500 to 2,000 pallets. So is this for ambient goods, fresh, frozen? It's for children uh, ambient. Children have been storage, uh, no capacity for frozen yet at the moment. So tell me this guys, right? And we have this whole problem, we have this whole issue in Northern Ireland and Ireland with Brexit and what have you. You know, we deal with a lot of companies that are getting in trouble with seals being broken. We're getting loads of being tampered. We're getting illegal immigrants, you know, climbing into trucks and, and contamination of loads as well. So from your point of view, right, and what you're doing, you mentioned earlier about the one seal. Explain that to a lot of the viewers that watch us that don't really understand what right. one seal means. The way my vision is for the whole business is a supplier in Manchester has six pallets to go to Ireland. The current process is he has a vet on site and he seals that truck. We're going then to lift another six pallets in Birmingham. This is just an example. We're breaking that seal and we're getting another seal for the six pallets that's going on in Birmingham. So now the driver's sitting with two seals. Maybe run on down to Bristol to lift another eight pallets. That's two seals broke. That's a third seal going on. That current process is wrong. This process here can work and it can work efficiently and work well for getting groupage from the UK and Ireland by consolidating in this centre. All the groupage comes here. It's all stamped by the, the all the paperwork is all done by the one vet. All the customs is all done with the one customs team and there's one seal goes on for the full load after it's all been consolidated and loaded on. 
And you know, from our point of view, we slabber on about compliance and tachographs and operator's license. McConney is a long standing client of ours, and compliance is at the very top of the list with use case. From a compliance point of view, from your driver's hours, you know, coming over on the boat, wasting the time on the boats, we have serious problems now with PO ferries or sea truck ferries, sorry. We have issues parking in around the ports, hence why our Hollyhead hub is opening. But just talk to me about that. What sort of increase is going to have with compliance when your drivers are? fit to come to a facility like this. Great lifeline here for the drivers to come because there's sharm facilities, toilets, parking up facilities, a kitchen here, all the amenities is here, so they're not parking now in services. They can come here to this yard, park up all night, take their time off and leave in the morning. What about all this carbon footprint that everybody's banging on about and been banging out for, for on for a long, long time? Surely that's going to be a massive reduction in carbon footprint over the period of 12 months to five years even. The way I see that also, Steve, refrigerated transport, especially in the UK, I believe in years to come here, this here will be even more substantial because we're going to be doing away with drivers coming and coming to the course of C. We're going to be able to hopefully have lorries based here full time and we'll have English drivers and them lorries doing the work here, shipping the tailors on a company down to the end of Ireland both north and south and then the boys on the other side they'll be doing all the work in Ireland and I'll just be there'll be no sailors anymore it'll all be hopefully shipping all across right, to and fro which again gives the increased road safety automatically yeah. increases compliance automatically gives guys a bit of a better work-life balance right. you know when you're trying to run that that in and out so fridge freight Limited is the company that we're in now at the moment. Fridge Freight Ireland Limited. Fridge Freight Ireland Limited. And uh, so it's based here in Scammers Deal. And let's get a wee look about, do you mind? Yeah. About the, where? Yeah, right. So this here, guys, what's what's in here? That's where the vet's based in there. That's the vet's. Yeah, uh, he operates in there. How many, how many vets be on site? Uh, two at any time to at any time. What's the yeah. purpose of the vets? Now this is something even that I learned myself, but what is the purpose of having a vet on site? And this is only meat products and anything, anything at risk, so anything oh. of animal origin. So your cheeses, your milks, your yogurts, butters, meat, anything, anything, anything of fish. Fish. Yeah. Isn't that mad? So the end, the end user, or any of the, the followers, or any of the watchers of this particular video, people don't even know this. So you're telling me anything that has fish product in it, for example, has to be veterinary tested, certified. veterinary certified yeah. to come across the IRC. Yeah. And then who who brought the cost that really? The end, end user. End user. The end user, okay. So that one stop shop really is where money that's, can be saved. That's what we were saying about the one stop yeah. shop, Stephen. Everything can come here, be consolidated, one vet, one stamp on all the paperwork, and one seal and the full loaded ribbage put over there. What you're saying is there? Ah, no. Yeah, it's a great squad here, Mark, isn't it? Unbelievable. Great squad. So, uh, let me see, that's the run. We've finished up here. Like, we're finished up. What's that? So, that's it, guys. Even if you want to work to yourselves, our own clients, and maybe you have no relationship at the moment with uh, Fridge Freight or McConney Distribution, get on to us, get on to our office. We'll pass it over. As you know, McConney Distribution is a long standing client of ours. They push and strive for compliance, they push and strive for health and safety. And they also strive for good customer service as well. So. And we know that because we were at a at a client in Glasgow yesterday, uh -huh. actually a customer of yours, okay. and uh, they were singing your praises. You know, so it is what it is. Like you, the evidence, the, what do we say, Mark? The proof in the pudding? The proof in the pudding. Right, come on, we need to get to Birmingham. Let's go. So, so before that, I know you said in the other room, but before that, give me an idea of the amount of time that product would change or be transshipped or be changed over the trailers or... Once. I'll come in here. No, no, before that, before you were doing this. Oh, Stephen, it has to go the whole way to Derry Keegan. Uh, the whole way in the Ireland. And sometimes you're not getting full loads because a man might be out of time having to get the boat maybe only half a load on and you're shipping that half load in. Maybe somebody doesn't want that load consolidated with anybody else's product. So you're shipping half a load in. And that's costing money too. It's as cheap to put a full trailer load in as it is a half trailer load in. So we can consolidate full trailers to the brand, proper paperwork, and ship them straight in the Ireland. And then you know, because that's the big thing, when sales are broke and you get cross-contamination and it's being dropped from trailer to trailer. A, a big problem that a lot of guys might know is that we have products being dropped into certain locations. They're being transshipped. They might be put on two or three different trailers, yeah. really, yeah. and then they get to you from a from an end user point of view. So, listen, let's get a wheel up. Okay. Just in here alone, I noticed that we have vans made of chillers and all. Is this a chilled facility? Chilled space, yeah, yeah. It's chilled, chilled area here, running about plus three. 
Yeah. And um, it's all sealed off. It's all. Um, you have this door coming down up in here yeah. to make sure that we don't drop the temperature. Yeah. We're, we're also offering here, um, Stephen, a full cross dock facility. Should any other Irish transport company need to cross dock loads here, the facilities here to cross dock loads as well on a daily basis. That's good to know. Yeah. So explain that to me again. Here. So we have, we have um, take a wheel up there, Paul, rally about the park. We get him thrown off in a wee second so we can hear this better. But cross docking, there's a lot of guys follow us here, a lot of young guys that always ask these questions. What exactly does cross docking mean? Cross docking means, so there's maybe been, let's say, six loads come out of Ireland. So one comes out of a meat plant in Dublin, one comes out of a meat plant in Limerick, one comes out of a meat plant in Cork. On each of them trailers, them suppliers might be supplying the one supplier in the UK. So a trailer in Cork could have stuff on for London, a trailer from Waterford could have a stuff on for London, a trailer from Dublin could have stuff on for London. That all comes out here is cross dock. It's all put onto one trailer. A lorry going to London, a trailer going to Birmingham, a trailer going to with all them deliveries. Rather than them trailers all coming out and all going to individual places with all that particular company's products on it. Well, we have a lot of clients, and it's it's fantastic to hear this because we have a lot of clients, right, that go into certain locations and people would let them cross dock because they're not associated with that business. Are you talking that this is a an open site for anybody to cross dock? Yeah, I mean, open site for any Irish holiday that's coming in, coming out from Ireland, Ireland here to be able to cross dock their their goods on here on a, on a daily basis, 24 hours a day. There are UK holidays that's in the area. Yeah, they need to use this facility. It's open. So you look someone here 24/7. Yeah, to drive a forklift or a pallet truck. Yeah. Right, come on, we'll take my duke up here. Okay. See. What else is happening? Just afraid that might be coming out too well, noisy ways, though. Be a man with that. I'm telling you. Well, switch off, we've got to be here. That's just what I'm going forward, search bleeping. Just to warn everybody, get out of here. Right guys, so as we said, we'll have the chiller facility, we have cross docking, what, what I'm going to call is open cross docking, so anybody that's a UK or Ireland, or even Europe guys coming in. Yeah, yeah. European, yeah. European guys, yeah. they touch fridge freight, um, give them a shout, email them, we'll put all the information below in this particular video. So from this side of the building here as well guys, we talk about cross docking there, we'll just touch on that cross docking bit um, as well. First of all, why would you want to cross dock? Several suppliers in Ireland Ireland, who's supplying into the UK, so that truck's coming out of one supplier and he's got all deliveries for all over the UK in that trailer from that supplier in Ireland. And other trucks coming out of, for example, Galway, and he's got all the same suppliers that's on the boy that's coming out of Limerick or Waterford. It all comes here. It's all taken off the trucks and it's all consolidated to one area. And then the drivers go on and deliver it from there. Because I know from our own experience, there's trailers coming up with a full load on and they're going absolutely everywhere. Yeah. And most of the time you're talking about groupage loads and that's dry freight and things like that ambient and dry freight but it's very hard to get that with chilled or frozen food yeah either way so yeah it's fantastic we're talking there about compliance bit right so yeah. we talk about compliance and health and safety you know we we have seen a lot of guys trans shipping trailer to trailer back to back electric pallet truck <laughs> health and safety's out the window so from a loading bay point of view compliance wise richard what what's your opinion on it does so, it work 100 oh, well, percent what about your site induction because you are very tight in your compliance here the site induction there's a visitor's book to sign in whenever you arrive on site so we have a trace of who's been here but nobody in the warehouse paul here the warehouse man will look after everything in regards to the loading of the trailers it's up to people to tell them what's to be loaded on right so we don't have uh, the guys aren't a lot of the sites we would go into for what we call as free cross docking as the boy yeah. can do it himself it's the most dangerous dangerous high risk liability on a business that you can get somebody to come in use a electric pallet truck or a forklift they're not trained how to use it they don't understand the mechanism of the door alarms or the key custody policy so give us an example Richard of if somebody comes here right uh, will they lo unload themselves absolutely not we have Paul on site here he's here all the time he'll do the loading tap on the loading and on the needs done he'll sort it out and Paul itself give me a wee clip over to my beautiful assistant I'll, ta I'll talk to Paul here for two seconds because it's a good example, Paul here is a driver as well, so Paul understands in a long time going to these loading areas and wasting time. What's the biggest waste of time at a loading place? Sitting, waiting for a member of staff 
the warehouse people to get you tipped and get away. We understand from a driver's point of view, when you get on the bay, get tipped and get on your way. As and simple as that. And the frustration of palace damage, the frustration of not being fit to come in and secure your load, you know, pulling out onto the middle of the street, for example. Yeah. Frustration, I know my frustration from yeah. years of driving of having no toilet facilities, having no, couldn't even wash your bloody hands. But this here, you're going to cater for all. Yes, absolutely. A driver can come in and use our toilet facilities, use our canteen, no issue whatsoever. Fill up his flask, make a cup of tea, have his break here. We have a yard, big massive yard out there. Take their break, no problem. So there you go, guys, right? That's a sheer class bit of information that we have. We'll go back over these two guys here. From a point of view of, of loading, how many loading bays do we have currently? Five. Five loading bays. Three here and two down the bottom. And um, with the loading bays themselves, you just have a big trailer park, as Paul was saying there earlier on. If somebody wanted to come in, drop a trailer in the yard and ask you to, say, tip it for a driver to get his nine hours off, for example, can you do that? Yes, no problem. I think that's another bit, Paul, come on in here to the conversation. <laughs> Well, I think that's another big thing as well. You know, a driver comes in and they want a tranship and the tack graph's born and born and away. Yes. Well, how can we, as a compliance company, how can you use what you're trying to do help that? We tell the driver to drop the trailer, take his time off, park up, take his time off. We'll tap and read out the trailer and pull the trailer off and shut it up, shut the doors for him. Thank you. Time, you his time's off. You couldn't ask better than that. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, two, two or three drivers yesterday asking, can I can I have a break here? No issue whatsoever. There's your canteen, there's your toilet, work away. No issue whatsoever. I'll tip your trailer, I'll sort everything out for you. See, I'll give you a shout when you're ready. We're used to the opposite, aren't we? We're used to being told, get off the bay, get off the bay. Yes. And your tack grass borne away. And this is why a lot of European and Irish haudiers end up being forced into running over their time. Not that they want to run over their time, but they're made run over their time due to circumstances, or they might pull their card because they're trying to look after themselves. I think that's the main thing. Yeah. You know, it's a massive road safety gain here as well. So anyway, boys, back to the you guys. One more time, just give me a very quick overview of what's the whole point of fridge freight. As I said um, earlier on, I identified this about a year ago of the facility that's required um, within the UK of getting goods across to England, Ireland. And I think we've, we've hit the nail on the head with this place here where we can bring in all groupage, all single pallets, all part loads, consolidate in here, one stamp onto all the veterinary paperwork, one seal on the back of the truck, and over to Ireland. One stop shop. So there's one, two, three, four, five of us standing in this depot here tonight. We're all from Northern Ireland. We all understand the frustration we have with our current assembly as such. Have you had any help or any support from the House in the Hill? We we have been in the House in the Hill, Stephen, as you talk about. And we spoke for a bun. Yeah. <laughs> no, and we spoke to a few senior members in the house. We told them a proposal and our idea. They listened to us, but they never gave us any real backing on it. But I've no doubt they're probably watching what we are doing. We're going to get it right here and we will do it and we'll give a solution of easiness and efficiency of getting groupage from the UK and the island of Ireland. We'll make it happen. Listen boys, you've heard it here first, boys and girls. One thing I will say, what about recruitment? You know, because a lot of people be asking us as well, but from a recruitment point of view, are you looking for any staff here with Paul? He's looking at any driving staff. A lot of people follow us. A lot of young guys follow us. So, um, through, through time, possibly, yes, we'll be looking for staff here as yes. things pick up. Day drivers, night drivers, based here. They'll not be lying away. They'll be based here through the through the day, working on the night again. And that's a big thing we spoke about in the office, you know, about a bit of a more work-life balance, Paul, yeah. where the guys from Ireland were used to coming over here, spend all week here. Um, but if it can be loaded, shipped out, as you said, Ricky, there's the sailors are hopefully starting to be a thing of the past. Yeah. And guys don't want to do that. No. And we're having trouble with boats. But more, one of my big issues, apart from road safety and all the stuff that we specialize in, is this carbon footprint is a massive thing in hauliers. And the carbon tax is starting to be hit on, on hauliers. And there's a massive opportunity to reduce the carbon footprint, not just with the damn good trucks you, you run and the Euro 6 vehicles that you run and all the new equipment that we have, but also the less mileage, less mileage, less wear and tear on the roads, less fumes. I think we'll send it off now, so stop in there and stand. Look, boys, it's exciting times. And as I've said to you, I believe if we look back in this year, maybe in a year's time, we'll wonder how we do without a place like this here. Of easiness of getting the stuff from here into the island of Ireland. Well, what, one thing I will say, right? So, for, so no one has used boys for a long time now. Um, there will be expansion, no doubt, because. Yeah. 
is are very much customer focused. I have to say is very much client focused and therefore what the client wants, you usually accommodate what your customers what your customers want. So yeah. I don't think there's gonna be any issue there. Anyway guys, we're gonna put all the links down on the down below and yeah, follow the journey here. So there's a good vlog with you guys. We'll come back. What'll we come back in? Six months. We'll come back in six months, we'll do a full video and either it'll be absolutely flat out or it won't be here. That'll be here, Stephen. Good answer. <laughs> That's all. Yeah.